do we project our shadow onto our mother? Um, the shadow can be projected onto yeah anybody, absolutely. Yeah. So that yeah. The, as as adults, we may see we have a relation with the mother, and then we start projecting, still continuing to project mm -hmm. the things that we push away onto the mother, onto other relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so the key really is to face the unconscious, which the first step is always shadow work. And what are, what are we repressing and, or denying about ourselves, our own personality, that we weren't allowed to express because of that mother-daughter dynamic or mother-son dynamic? Um, it, and not to blame the mother, but to choose, you chose your, op your security uh, safety kit to, to survive in the world. And so your little personality survival, what wasn't allowed to be expressed, and we need to reintegrate that into our life. Um, so if your mother was mean and you decided, I'm going to be super nice because I don't want to be like my mother, <laughs> it's it's about how does that limit your life? How do we integrate um, that projection, like my mother's mean, my mother's mean, and I can't be mean because my mother was terrible. I need to see how that limits me. And integrate that into my life not that you need to be mean but where does that limit your expression where where is that dynamic those labels stop you yeah so following uh, the individuation path then uh, individuals get to a point once they've integrated some of their shadow work or some of their shadow um, dealing with a mother archetype mm. and we've seen uh, from our own practice in coaching people through individuation that at the heart of many people's individuation process is that relationship with the mother archetype. It is a big part of kind of coming to terms with who am I and what can I expect from the world. And so this mother archetype, we project onto our human mother and then we carry that that uh, identity or that, that kind of uh, perspective in our, ourselves. But when we do shadow work, then we're free of that, just limited, just that's the mother. And we connect to a bigger picture of the mother, which is the anima mundi, which is the soul of the world, is the mother. Uh, our bodies become our mother. Everything material in the world uh, becomes our mother. And there's actually a practice in Buddhism, like we say, like, uh, you know, like everyone's your mother, basically. Like there's an aspect of all of us. So there's this really divine aspect of mother. And uh, she was basically a human kind of stand-in for you as you early in life. And it's a beautiful, I mean, what, what a burden it is for the mother to carry that for a child. And so I want to go back to this, uh, our mothers out there who are mothers. We have mothers and we have children and the mothers that are really hard on themselves. You know, they hear this and they're like, oh my God, I'm screwing my kids up and I'm, they're going to have an insecure attachment style and how can I prevent that and how can I ha make ha have healthy children because I have this baggage from my mother. How do we, um, how do we, what would you say to a mother, our mothers out there for themselves of, to be empowered and how raising children, because you were worked with children for and pa families for many, many, many years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's almost like uh, the definition of love is the willingness to screw it up. Mm. <laughs> you know, a, a good parent is simply saying, I know I'm not going to be perfect at this. I know I'll probably mess it up, but I'm willing to try and I'm willing to stay with it. Mm. You know, or, or if I've made mistakes in the past, I'm willing to learn and retry and stay with it. That kind of staying, that kind of being there for the kid, uh, that's the best mother, really. And Actually, that's a good point, because if you present to your children that you're perfect, they have this expectation, I have to be perfect like my mother. You know, I have yeah. to be just so good. And uh, the mother to be more uh, uh, basically transparent. A little bit i mean keeping the authority of course but you want to be transparent i'm like i'm doing my best here you know i'm struggling mommy's struggling today you know uh I, i'm worried about my mom she's sick you know this is what's going on with me telling the children what's going on and being human around them it helps them realize you know what life is not about perfection it's not about doing everything right all the time 
uh, although we do need those structure and guidelines, but we, you know, to behave and all those things, that you don't want to leave it wide open for the child, but that flexibility to make mistakes and fall down and, and, and be, it's okay. You know, you're not, you are not bad. You did something bad, but you are not bad. And if we can kind of look at our mothers that way is that she's not, the essence of her isn't bad or evil. Maybe some things she did were not perfect, but her, who she is in the soul level is, is divine. Mm-hmm. And to see our mothers as divine and see ourselves as divine in the world, no matter how much we screw up our relationships, that is really the essence of power. And then that's where really we can begin to create our life in a new way. We're not tied to those, the, the re- rigid society morals that everyone tells us we need to be in order to be liked and approved of.